unfortunately Randy is not here today. He would have loved to be here. I was with him a few days ago. And we were thinking of, instead of doing the unusual maybe interview, going over Randy's many famous uh, adventures and, uh, and stunts and uh, you know, you've seen the movie, you've seen An Honest Liar, you all know everything, the Project Alpha, uh, Popov, uh, you know them all, right? <laughs> so we were thinking, why not go into some of those stories that uh, are a little less known, but that show how Randy's mind worked from the beginning, in many situations, and... Uh, there are so many, you, you, you cannot imagine. Uh, um, I've been working on Randy's book, and this is a question that I've been asked a few times uh, here. Uh, how is the book coming? And I will tell you in a little while, don't worry. And there are so many, as I say, these stories and adventures, and even Randy didn't remember many of them. But I found papers and, and documents and, um, you know, uh, diary entries and articles that he wrote detailing some of these adventures and they were quite a surprise to him as well. <laughs> you all know that he was a, a great fanatic of Houdini and you know, he studied all his life, all of his escapes and adventures. And he became himself a great artist in, uh, in escapology. He specialized, among other things, in uh, escaping jails, which is not one of the easiest things to do for a magician or an escapologist. And there is a very specific occasion that uh, really strikes anybody who hears it. And it's uh, about um, a challenge that he was given while he was in uh, Quebec, you know, he came from Canada. He was touring the, the provinces of Quebec. And there was a, this jail in, um, city, in a town called Valleyfield. I'm not sure if anybody... Is anybody from Valleyfield? Yeah, yeah you are? Montreal? Okay. And so he was challenged to escape from this very secure prison uh, cell inside the Valley, Valleyfield police station. And, uh, and so he went there, met with the police uh, ch chaptain, uh, captain, and um, they showed him the jail. This is the, the cell. You will be put in here with your handcuffs and everything. You will be closed. There is a door to be closed. This is the key. And then we will walk outside. You will be there. And there is another door, very heavy steel door closing the whole block. And when we close it, there is also like a hatch coming down and blocking all of the doors at once, a second, a, second, uh, a second lock to make it more secure. And when it is closed from the outside, there is no way to get out. So you want to take the challenge? And so Randy said, of course, I'm here. So that's what happened. Randy was taken inside uh, the jail. He was put with uh, lots of handcuffs and legs and chained to a, a chair. The police said, you, you're, uh, you're sure you want to do this? <laughs> yes, I'm here, you know, I have a whole series of shows in town around and I need to make some publicity, so just lock me up. Okay, so you, you're asking for it. Uh, there were plenty of journalists and news, newsmen and photographers. So they locked him up. And uh, the whole crowd walked to the steel door. You're still sure? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so they went out, they locked the door, and waited. The, the agreement was that every four or five minutes, the police uh, would open a small window in the steel door and ask, Randy, are you fine? And he would answer, yes, I'm fine. And they did this two times. Randy, you fine? Yes, I'm fine. And the third time, Randy, you fine? Randy? You fine? Let's get inside. So they open the door, and somebody in the street is bah, 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 beeping a car. Jeez, what is this? And, and all the, 
the newsmen are getting anxious. Let's get inside, let's see what's happening. They get inside and they hear a, a crashing noise. What happened? It fell. Maybe it just didn't sell some harm. Let's get inside. So they all get inside and it's so pitch dark. The light went out, something happened maybe. So they get to the door, open the cell. There is the chair. There are all the handcuffs, the chains. And Randy's not there. Where is Randy? And outside the car, beep, 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 beep. Would somebody get that car and stop it? So somebody gets out. Where is Randy? Where is he gone? Where is Nobody's there. Nobody can see Randy. Somebody gets outside. And Chief, will you please come, come over? Come over here. Look outside the window. Outside the window, there's a car in the parking lot. And there's Randy there. Pe, 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 pe. <laughs> So, this is the original situation. How did he do it? And this is the interesting part. <laughs> That's, this, and, and, and this is, um, Randy actually described how he did it in a, in a, in a letter to a friend in, in great detail, and, uh, and it's fascinating. So this is what he did. He was used to visiting cells and prisons months, years in advance. Maybe he would be passing through a town or and he saw that there was a, a police station and uh, in the middle of the night he would stop by saying, you know, I got lost, I need to go here, I don't know where is the street, and ask instruction to the policeman on, on hold. And, uh, and he would say, oh, okay, you, you just take this road and then he would look around and say, oh, this is fantastic, this building, what was it? And maybe the policeman there was tired and uh, bored, especially, and, you know, somebody asking information, you know, oh, well, it uh, used to be a city hall, and, oh, really fascinating, and uh, you, got the ch um, you got this kind of locks, I see. Yeah, you know something about, oh, I'm a collector, you know, this is, is this a mentor or a branti, gorati? Oh, you know, yes, yes. And, and this is the key that we use. Oh, that's giant. Let me see. Oh, what a, what a giant key. <laughs> and while he was looking at the key, of course, uh, and what is that? And asking something, he had like a plaster <laughs> in his pocket that would take a, an impression of the key and then put it away, give the key back, and take note of where the cell was that opened. Uh, that the key opened, and oh, that's very fascinating. Well, see you next time. Bye bye. And then two years went by. <laughs> Nobody remembered that incident, of course. Randy already had the key. So when he went there in the afternoon to the same cell, of course, it was him through friends that put the challenge on himself. He asked them to, you know, police, challenge this guy because he claims he can escape from prisons. And, uh, so that's how he got himself challenged. So he would go there and visit the cell and say, so this is the cell you would put me on? Yes, this is it. Oh, see, let me see. Oh, it's very, very secure. He would touch around and feel everything and leave the copy of the key <laughs> under the bed. Okay, then we can go. And the day of the escape, he would return, he would undress, they put on handcuffs and uh, had leg irons or whatever. He had no problem in that. He could get out any, any moment with uh, no difficulty at all. So when they locked him up in that cell, and that's the, the actual police chief, they lock him up, but as soon as they turn around to go, he already has the handcuffs gone. They're gone. He's free. <laughs> You're fine? Sure, sure, fine, fine. So they start to go. He, he, he comes up, he takes the key, opens the door without them hearing him, just you know, a little bit, so that when they are out and they close with the hatch, the hatch will not engage. So the door is open, it, the, the, all the others are closed. As soon as they close the door, he gets out. Uh, well, f um, in this occasion not, but in other occasion he was maybe without his clothes and, and the clothes would be put into another jail, so he would collect them and put them on again. But this time he, he just unscrewed all the lamps because he needed darkness. And then returned, put all the handcuffs together, they linked them together, and uh, put the chair leaning 
and linked to the door so that it would hold it close to the as much as possible when he was out. And then what he did? Then he went uh, to the steel door and stayed behind, like this. But when they open it to get inside, it would be there, but in the darkness. So that you, they were calling for him, Randy, Randy, where are you? And they open in the door and unleash, un, uh, leaving the, the lock. The chair would fall, closing the door. That, that's closed now. There's no way that they can find out how they did it. And he's there waiting. Outside, there is the car, and his friend, who was in the trunk, <laughs> had come out and beeping before, even before they opened the door. Started beeping. So that when they are all inside, in the darkness, Randy slips out from behind the door, gets into the bathroom, goes out to the window, takes the place of his friend and continues beeping. The friend goes into the, in the trunk, and it's done. Very easy, right? The first um, escape that has been made possible at the, in the history of uh, the police station. But Randy, as you know, had many interests outside magic, science, technology, archaeology. He once went on an expedition to find the lost city of Vitcos in Peru. Do you know this one? Yeah. He knew that there was a lost city in the forest, in the jungle of Peru, uh, dating back to when the, in the 1600, when the the conquistadores uh, came and in South America and, uh, and drove everybody uh, away. There was this, this town that got submerged by, by the jungle and was lost forever. But there were informations that made him think where this was. And so I found this description of the whole, uh, of the whole trip there. And it's quite an adventure because they went searching for caves uh, they went into um, villages where there was no, no possible technology, no, no running water, nothing. They got uh, malaria. Uh, at one point, they even got shot by some people who didn't want them there, so they really followed them with guns. So, a series of adventures. And in the end, uh, he fell very ill because of malaria, and he had to be brought on a helicopter to be brought back to a hospital. And they asked him, what, what were you doing there? I was looking for the lost city of Vitkos. And uh, I heard this story, uh, but the only way you can go there is by an helicopter that drops you in the middle of the jungle because it's too thick, you cannot go there. And unfortunately, Randy never had a chance to go back with an helicopter and be, dro be dropped in the jungle but he had lots of adventures to tell about this, uh, this escape. And uh, when he returned, he thought for a, for, a, for a moment, maybe, to abandon magic. To, you know, to, magic is not my life. I devote myself to science, to archaeology, because that's what fascinated him the most. This is when he moved to Romson in New Jersey. He was living in New York before then. Didn't really changed his mind, actually. He continued to be a, a magician and escape artist, and more and more popular. He even, you know, started to do commercials. This is new design bounce fabric softener. It works in your dryer, where it does some amazing things. It makes your clothes wonderfully soft. It eliminates static cling completely. And it makes your clothes smell fresh and beautiful. A fresh smell that lasts days longer than liquids. And it couldn't be easier. Watch. Now Bounce has a new embossed design. As the ingredients are released, the design disappears and Bounce softens, eliminates static cling, and gives clothes a long-lasting freshness. See? Design's gone. How do they do that? <laughs> He 
he was very popular back then. You remember Happy Days, of course. He was uh, doing lots of popular television at the time. But uh, by that, but when he was at this age, he was already much involved into investigation of paranormal claims. And uh, he, he went all over the world to test psychics of all kinds. And they, he even came to Italy in the 1970s because Piero Angela, who was the, the founder of CICAP, the, the organization that I'm the, the director, uh, had invited him to test many psychics that had wanted to win his $10,000 at the time prize. And among them there were dowsers, like this one. This, uh, the, the, well, there were actually like 10 dowsers. They had pipes going underground with water running. He, he had shown that he could find the water in the pipe. So he was going around this little field and every time that he felt water, he would put a, a small signpost. So that moves, you see, that's real. This is the real water tube going, and this is his science, not even close. At times, Randy found that it was useful to hide his identity. Uh, maybe some of you have uh, uh, met reading his, uh, his material, a uh, character named Adam Jerzin. Never heard of him? Adam Jerzin, no? That's the anagram for James Randi. <laughs> and there is a videotape of Adam Jerzin uh, going to a psychic, and we're going to see him. This is the psychic. No, no, no. And this is Adam. You come in when we start rolling, just, just to get to edit, you know. Let's go. How are you? Fine, thank you. What is your name? Adam. Adam. Hmm. All right, Adam. You want to shuffle the cards and make a wish to yourself and make four piles. She's really thinking, look at this character. Yeah. He, he can even shuffle a deck of this. cards. Mm -hmm. But you're a very successful man. Uh, but you're a very prosperous man. You're prosperous in what you wanted to do. And in certain things, you're even more successful than you planned. So your future looks good also. And so you don't worry, all right? God bless you. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, lots of back problems. You see, mm -hmm. he kept on doing that. And of course, we don't have the whole recording, but she said, and I feel you have back problems. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was easy. There is an occasion that some of you may have read about, but uh, probably never seen, because it's another one of those, uh, of those strange occasions where Randy was more clever than those who thought they were going to catch him. And, uh, and the occasion was 1974, I guess, uh, when there was a, a Canadian TV presenter. His name was Alan Spraggett. Does ring any bell, Ray? Yeah? Alan Spraggett? Oh, yes, yes. Of course you remember. Alan Spraggett was this um, TV presenter, a strong believer in the paranormal, and especially in Uri Geller at the time. And uh, he, he couldn't stand Randy going around and claiming that he could do the same things that Geller did under the same conditions. It's not possible because he had seen Geller bend spoons, guess drawings that he had done while hiding, and Randy was not in any, no way possible that he could do it. So he called him through his, uh, through his uh, office and invited him to the, to the program. And Randy said, well, you know, if you invite me to your program and then ask me to ban spoons or guess what's in an in a, in a envelope, it's impossible for me to do because I'm not going to find the same conditions that Gather found because he came there as a, as a superstar and I'm coming there as, a, as somebody who you want to challenge. So it's not the same thing. 
okay, then you come and we just discuss these things and uh, I'm not going to ask you to do anything. You're sure, because otherwise I'm not coming. No, 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 don't worry, don't, uh, come. So this is, this is what actually happened. Uh, this is in Italian, this is the only recording surviving, but I put subtitles so you can understand what it said. Uh, and it's interesting, and I'll later tell you why. Randy si è spinto anche più in là, ha voluto dimostrare che anche persone competenti in trucchi possono essere vittime di inganni e lo ha dimostrato nel corso di un programma televisivo in Canada. Questo signore è Alan Spraggett, parapsicologo convinto, autore di libri e anche esperto in trucchi. E gli aveva invitato James Randy alla sua trasmissione proprio per dimostrare che Randy in realtà non era capace di fare le cose che Uri Geller faceva. Estrasse due cucchiai che aveva portato egli stesso da casa, due cucchiai antichi da collezione, e chiese a Randy di piegarli strofinandoli semplicemente alla maniera di Geller. Doveva essere questa la dimostrazione che Randy non avrebbe mai potuto fare una cosa del genere in quelle condizioni. Ecco invece cosa accadde. impallidì. La sua sperata dimostrazione si ritorceva proprio contro di lui. Diventava cioè la dimostrazione lampante che Randy, messo nelle stesse condizioni di Geller, poteva fare le stesse cose. Spraggett sfidò Randy a indovinare il disegno che lui stesso aveva fatto a casa e poi chiuso nella busta senza farlo vedere a nessuno. Affermò che Geller era riuscito a indovinare il disegno tenendo semplicemente la busta tra le mani per 10 secondi. Randy disse allora Va bene, mi dia 10 secondi. Questo disegno, è bene notarlo, Spraggett lo aveva custodito fino a quel momento nella tasca interna della giacca. Non solo, ma non aveva neppure detto a Randy che avrebbe dovuto sottoporsi a questo esperimento. Vale a dire che le condizioni erano molto più difficili e il controllo molto più stretto di quello adottato nei confronti di Keller. Proprio per questo Randy, dopo aver chiesto carta e penna, disse Se riuscissi a indovinare il disegno nella busta, lei direbbe che sono un medium? Non lo so, sarei molto impressionato. Ma scusi, lei sostiene che Geller è un medium perché riesce a fare questo. Beh, vediamo se lei sa farlo. No, scusi, lei dice che Geller è un medium perché riesce a farlo. Se io faccio altrettanto, dirà che sono un medium? Dirò che lei mi ha sorpreso. Bene, ora chiudo quello che ho disegnato e lo metto qui. Vuole aprire la busta e dirmi cosa c'è dentro? Certamente. Che cosa c'è? È un battello, un battello a vapore. Con il fumo che va verso destra? Sì. Sono un medium se ho riprodotto il suo disegno? Sì o no? Se l'ha riprodotto lei è straordinario. Ma non sono un medium? È straordinario. Allora sono straordinario. È davvero straordinario. Davvero straordinario. Questo non le prova niente? Evidently not. Well, the nice fact is that after this episode the, the, the show was cancelled and Randy got his revenge. The secret of the magician is always to be one step ahead of the spectator. So what, what happened here? Randy went to the TV station knowing very well who he was going to deal with and not trusting him a bit. He came there, he arrived there in the morning. Uh, the, the taping was in the afternoon, of course. Very early. And uh, arrived at the, at the gate and said, oh, I have a um, recording to do with Mr. Spraggett, but it's very early now. Yeah, I know, but my plane just landed. I don't know where to go. It's going to rain. Oh, just get inside and don't worry. So he got inside. There was nobody around at the time. So what, what, what should I do? Just look around. And there's a door. Sprag it. Ah. <laughs> It's locked. <laughs> no, 
not a big problem there. <laughs> Got inside, there's a suitcase on the, on the table. Open the suitcase, two spoons and an envelope. Interesting. <laughs> Let's see this envelope, open it. Oh, a bolt, let's see, interesting. <laughs> Take another envelope and seal it again. Take the spoons, prepare them, and put it back. Close the door, get out, wait a little, and then uh, go again on the gate and say, you know, I'm getting hungry, I need to get some food. Uh, oh, we don't have food. Uh, go to the rest. Okay, we'll, we'll see you later. And then he just waited outside, waited, waited, waited. There was a shift in the guards around noon or something. And then he waited even more, and uh, around 10 minutes to the beginning of the taping of the show, it was, uh, it was raining, of course, and he, sta he stood in the rain, getting all soaked up. And then he r went running, frantic, to the gate. I must, I'm here because I have to tape um, a show, and now it's very late. You come inside, sure. So, and as soon as he got into the, into the lot, Spraget was coming outside of his office. Oh, here you are. We, we thought we were never going to do it. Oh, come on, we've got to tape right now. Oh, I just arrived. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, come on. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's something for you. <laughs> 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 and that's how we did it. And there are so many stories like this. Uh, there are so many. You, you, you would need a real biography to tell them all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, and then and, and the idea of well, is, is to write a biography of Randy, as you know. Uh, there's been a, a research being done for years now by a good friend, Kim Scheinberg, who did a fantastic job at uh, finding everybody who had known Randy since his childhood and locating all kinds of documents and papers. And uh, there's tons of materials of stuff that have been passed to me in order to write the story. And, um, you know, this is a, a fantastic book. We know it would be a fantastic book for not only for skeptics or for magicians, but for everybody, for every science lover, uh, because it's, it's a story of a, a fantastic life, but also of a, a life of a man who has put science and the scientific method as a, as a guide for his life. But you have to deal with publishers. Um, who tend to look for other aspects when uh, preparing or publishing a book. And uh, maybe they think it, this would be an interesting book for a limited um, public, maybe. And, uh, and so, the, uh, you know, the, the economic treatment that you would get would be very uh, small. The uh, problem is that um, making a living out of my writing, it, devoting myself to a book like this would mean uh, working a full year, at least. Uh, a full year, I would say that in a year I could get the book done. And we were going to uh, try to fund this work through a fundraising campaign. And we selected a special moment to do this uh, fundraising campaign, which was 2015, when An Honest Liar had just come out, it was doing very well, and there was going to be the last uh, amazing meeting. So would be a, a good occasion to close this, uh, this part of Randy's life with uh, the announcement that the fundraising campaign was successful and the book could be done. But then, for some reasons, I was asked to suspend, to, to put on hold this, uh, this campaign. So that window closed, I had other book contracts to... Uh, to, 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 to to follow, because uh, I had other books to write, and, um, and so I still have to find the, the, the time to devote to this book, which uh, would be a fantastic job for me, devote myself for a full year, di diving deep into Randy's life. There are so many stories, and one th thread that you can find throughout his life is his uh, care and real and sincere um, affection for people that he even doesn't know, his, his, his need to help others. You can find this from the beginning of his life, um, when, he, when he wanted to denounce a spiritualist church where he was taken uh, very unwisely. 
and he noticed that there were trickery being done and he denounced them and they took him to jail, to the prison. Well, they didn't take him to jail, but they took him to the police station. And uh, until, you know, all through his life, helping young magicians getting started. Right here, there is a very famous magician who works in um, Chris Angel at the Luxor. Uh, he has his show, and uh, Chris Angel, the other, last year we were, we went to see his show, and he had everybody stand up and pay a tribute to Randy, he described as a legend, because it was very meaningful to him to have Randy there, because Randy helped him start his career, and even gave him his name. So he was uh, quite excited to have Randy there. And there are so many around uh, that owe a, a, a lot to him. And uh, even recently, when he had his chemotherapy, uh, he didn't spend his time at the hospital, you know, uh, thinking about his situation. He spent the time there going to the little ladies who had nobody. They were, they were alone, and so he went there, just made a few jokes, and then took out a deck of cards, <laughs> entertained them for a little. And even when he was finished doing chemotherapy, every day or so he would go there at lunchtime and entertain a few of the ladies, and he was well known at the hospital, and everybody called him Willy Wonka without a hat. <laughs> and he kept on doing that, because he felt they needed this kind of sustain. So, just to say that, uh, you know, Randy's life is something extraordinary, and next year he's going to come here and, uh, and tell you more stories, I'm, I'm sure. So, this is a situation uh, for the book at the moment. Uh, if you know any millionaire around, or if you know anyone who wants to invest and wants this book to be done for Randy, and because we want Randy to read it, of course, step, step up and we can meet outside. Thank you. Thank you very much.